Hello and welcome back for another video of China in the Global South. My name is Christian Gerone Emma. I'm the francophone editor with China Global South Project. And every week I bring a new video about China's engagement and presence in the Global South. In those videos, we talk about different issues, politics, infrastructure, financing, development, all those different issues related to China's engagement and presence in this country, in the global south. So this week, we are going to talk about the Congolese president trip, Felix Tshisekedi, to China. The moment I'm recording this video, the Congolese president has arrived in China for a five days state visit. During this visit, he's going to meet Chinese officials and businessmen. He's going to be in Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen. So he's going to meet the Chinese President Xi Jinping and um, Chinese Premier Li Tiang, as well as other Chinese officials. During this trip, he's going to talk about a wide range of issues that pertaining to the DRC and China relationship. He's arriving in China in a very particular context. He's arriving in a moment where last week he has instructed his government to get in touch with the Chinese companies involved in the Sikomin deal. The Sikomin deal, that is the joint venture that was born out of the DRC China deal that was signed in 2008, where the DRC was supposed to receive infrastructure and the Chinese had access to natural resources, copper and cobalt. That was a six billion deal where three billion was for infrastructure and three billion was supposed to be invested in the Sikomin mining um, components of the deal. So out of the three billion that was supposed to be invested for infrastructure, the DRC has noticed on that there's only 800 million that were invested. So in 2021, Flick Security has expressed his disappointment uh, over the implementation of that deal. Since then, he's been very adamant on to following up on how that deal was implemented and what was supposed to be done. So last February, the State Auditor Office released a report, a very damning report toward that the Sikomin deal. In short, the State Auditor Office is demanding 17 billion more to be added to the 3 billion for infrastructure because it does believe that the DRC has provided $90 billion worth of mining rights where the DRC only got 3 billion in terms of infrastructure. And out of those 3 billion, only 800 million were released. So when the report was released, Chinese companies and Chinese embassies, of course, were not happy about that. They had expressed their disappointment and they were even quite uh, harsh in the language where they were questioning the legitimacy of the state auditor office to evaluate the deal and to make an assessment out of it. So last week, Friday, Flick Chisekidi has instructed his government to get in touch with the Chinese company to formally launch the negotiation. So he's arriving in Beijing in that context, hoping to, to garner the political will from Chinese authority to formally launch the negotiation. Why does he need that? Because the, the, the Chinese company involved in this project are state-owned entities. So the, the, the margin of action is quite depending on what the government is going to tell them. So with this trip, Felix Chisekidi hopes at least to get that political will from Chinese authority that maybe it's time to renegotiate those deals and to come with better terms from the DRC and a term that's going to satisfy both sides. So far, it's not guaranteed that's going to happen because the Chinese company have uh, have been against the evaluation that was made. So we can be pretty much sure that we are going ahead uh, toward a very long negotiation process that's going to take place. Another point that are going to be part of the discussion that the President Shiseki is going to bring on the table with different Chinese companies and its, uh, and Chinese officials is the china molybdenum deal. If you remember, last April we made a video where we were talking about uh, how china molybdenum released a statement saying that they, they did find an agreement with Jekamin. But almost two months later, the it seems that there is still some uh, disagreement with the, with the two parties over fine print details where they have to hire on some details to finally sign an agreement. And Jekamin's officials who are accompanying President Chisekedi are hoping to finally to sign a final agreement in those deals. So those are one of those are two of the many points that are going to be part of the agenda of Felix Chisekedi. In China. Another element that's going to be on the agenda is related to military equipment. Recently, DRC has purchased nine drone CH4 from Chinese companies, 
and the first part of those drones were already arrived in DRC early this week, three of them out of the nine. So the DRC has been really interested into buying Chinese military equipment. For those who've been following the news, you do know that the DRC is facing an insurgent rebellion by uh, in the eastern part of the country led by the M23 that are supported by his neighboring country, Rwanda. So in that context, the DRC is trying to rebuild its army and its equipment. So for that, it's turning to China, trying to get military equipment to reinforce its own army. So we're going to also to follow on to see what kind of agreement and what kind of deal the Congolese president can get out of this. Another issue that might be on the agenda, it's about oil and gas. In the delegation of President Chisekedi, there's also the Minister of Oil and Gas. Recently, DRC has been really interested into taking part of the ECO project. The ECO project is that oil pipeline that's crossing, that's are going to cross Uganda and Tanzania until the east coast of Tanzania toward the Indian Ocean. So the DRC has been interested in taking part of that project. And why I'm mentioning this and why is going why it's going to mention it in China is because among the shareholders, the stakeholders in the eco project, we do find the China National Oil Offshore Corporation, the CNUC, uh, which is one of the stakeholders in the project. Although it's a very small share, only 8% comparing to Ugandan government and Tanzanian government and the French Total Energy, who, has, who have much more shares in the project. The CNUC has been trying also to expand this oil permit in Uganda and find new projects. We also know that the DRC has been trying to attract investors in the local bed shores and in the national park of Virunga, where he wants to, to exploit oil and oil in that region. It's been having difficulties to attract investors. So I do believe that during this trip, President Shisekedi and different members of the delegation might be raising this question and trying to get and meeting a Chinese oil company, maybe uh, Sinopec, maybe Knuk, to try to strike a deal to try to convince them to also invest in oil exploration in the part of the DRC. All these issues are going are surely going to be some of the items that we're going to find during those discussions. I saw in the delegation that the environment minister was also part of the delegation. And I really do hope that she's going to raise the questions of illegal logging that involved Chinese company in the Congo Basin Forest, where we see a lot of Chinese company being present there. I hope that she's she's going to urge Chinese authority to implement their own laws against, against illegal logging the law they passed in september 2020 all this topic might be or might not be in the agenda of president chisekedi but one of the topic that surely is going to be on that on the agenda is the sikomin deal and the simog deal and for the simog deal the mine minister was also part of the delegation she arrived early in beijing she already met uh, China Molib Bedam Simok um, CEO Sun Hui Wen, and they talk about the dispute they do have with Jack Amin. She also mentioned that she'd like to see Simok now investing in nickel because DRC has a potential for nickel. So she's hoping to see Simok investing in nickel in DRC just the way they did in Latin America. So all of those topics are going to be on the agenda of, of President Chisekedi during this trip. Going back to the Sikomin deal, I'd like to make a last comment before finishing because I've been asked about that. What are the likelihood of that renegotiation process to happen? Personally, I do believe that the timing to go to China first and second to launch the renegotiation was a very bad timing because is launching negotiation in a during election year. Elections are coming in December in the RC. So time is short. Chinese negotiators are known to dragging negotiation for long. So Chinese are also aware that elections are coming in the DRC in December 2023. Unless President Chisekedi and his team have already started discussing with those Chinese companies, which I doubt they did it's very likely that this negotiation is going to take long. And especially if he intends to use um, and to present a new deal as uh, one of um, 
one of his achievements for his first term, it might be uh, a very difficult moment for him to negotiate that deal, to renegotiate the deal in this specific moment. It, does he have leverage? Of course, he does. He does have leverage. He can at any time find a way to, you know, to declare that we're gonna dissolve the the agreement. We're gonna change the deal. We're gonna, you know, he can do whatever he wants. But let's keep in mind that, as I say, election is he ready to go into a fight with Chinese companies uh, in this context? I really doubt. I really doubt that. Either way, both sides, being Chinese or the Congolese, they they've shown and they've both sides, being the Chinese or the Congolese, they've demonstrated the willingness to keep on working together. Uh, we saw that with the agreement that Simok found with Jack. I mean, although even that agreement still kind of pending because some details needs to be ironed between the two parties. But on both sides, there's no really a real um willingness to to part ways so they're going to find an agreement so what kind of agreement they're going to find this is the question is Felix Chisekid is going to be under pressure to deliver a new deal before December if it's the case we might find ourselves with the new bad deal because the political context he find himself in might be leading him to you know to strike a bad deal Personally, I do believe that this is a process that should have been that should have started way earlier than late into the storm. And finally, I do believe that visiting China, your main trade partners and your main uh, mining mining investors in your country in the very last year of your term is quite bad. I mean, that's just my point of view. So all those topics and issues, we've covered them in our different coverages in French, in English, where we talk about Felix Chisekedi's trip uh, to China. We are going to keep on doing that until he leaves China. You're going to find different analysis in French, in English, and in our newsletter, both in French and both in English. So if it's your first time watching this video, if it's your first time in this channel, in this channel here, we cover different issues related to China's engagement in the global South. So if you like what you saw and you like to be updated with everything that we post in this channel, click the subscribe button and uh, also the ring. So you're going to be notified every time we drop a new video. So that's going to be all for me and see you next week for another video of China in the global South.